Well, hi there, and welcome once again to In Search of Christianity, brought to you by Bible Talk. And as always, on behalf of Mark, Alice, myself, we want to greet you in the wonderful name of our Lord and Amen. Savior, Jesus Christ. Yes, we do. As we get together, led by the Spirit, led by the Spirit, only Alan, by the Spirit, the Spirit of Truth. Thank you, Jesus. To go into His Word, Amen. that we might be encouraged, we might grow, that we might be more and more like like Jesus, because that's that's the goal. The goal of our instruction is love, and God is love. Lord, so, our Victor, evermore. Amen. So we're going to pick up where we left off last week. We're in the Book of Amos. Uh, if you've been here all along, you, you should know that we're going to be in starting, I think, in verse nine in the third chapter. If you've not been here before, we are studying the Book of Amos, mm -hmm. and I think this is our eighth uh, study. But all previous seven ones are available on the website at BibleTalk.com. So we're going to pick this up right after Mark asks God's blessing on our time together. Oh, Lord, we just thank you for the ability to get together and yes. learn from your word. Yes, just let us glean from it and let us uh, eat and feed upon it. And just dwell in your, your rest. Amen. 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 And don't forget... Test what I say. Amen. I, I always say, don't don't trust me. Test you. Test me. All right? That, that we discussed last week. Right. Says, and they tested the prophets. They tested the prophets. You have to. Well, it's, it's, not, a, it's not a suggestion. It's a command. It is a it's commandment a of God in 1 John 4, 1. Mm -hmm. So do it. Don't, don't listen to anybody without examining it. I'm miss. Including your very own self. Let a man examine himself. Make sure that that little rudder, that tongue of yours, make sure that that, that bridle on, on you, that directing your path, nothing's coming out but the word of God. Okay. Amos, chapter 3, verse 9. I'll pick it you there. God speaks to the prophet Amos and says, Proclaim on the citadels in Ashdod and on the citadels in the land of Egypt and say, Assemble yourselves on the mountains of Samaria and see the great tumult within her and the oppressions in her midst. Proclaim on the citadels. You know, the word citadels there, it's, 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 uh, the King James Version translates it palaces. Mm -hmm. Okay? And that Hebrew word is uh, also translated as castles in the King James. So that's what it comes from. It comes from a Hebrew word that literally means to be elevated. Can be lifted up, right? Mm -hmm. And high places, a citadel, a fortress, castles mm -hmm. tend to be on the high places, right? Overlooking. Uh, it, the instruction here from the Lord to proclaim from those high places put me immediately in memory of the words of Jesus when he said, What I tell you in the darkness, speak in the light. What you hear whispered in your ear, Proclaim from the housetops, Matthew 10, 27. Shout it from the housetops. A lion has roared, and it's no secret, okay? In Ashdod and in Egypt. Ashdod, by the way, now that was one of the principal cities of the Philistines, one of the five principal cities of the Philistines, okay? Mm -hmm. But this is going on, and this is why Amos has been sent by the Lord to, to, north to the kingdom of Israel. At a time when corruption in the priests of, the, of Israel, and specifically by the two sons of Eli, who was the high priest, okay, mm -hmm. caused the Lord to say this. And I'm going to read from 1 Samuel chapter 3, verses 12 and 13. So, so listen to this now. In that day, I will carry out against Eli all that I have spoken concerning his house from beginning to end. For I have told him that I am about to judge his house forever for the iniquity which he knew. Hmm. Was Amos contemporary with Samuel? No, no. No, this was later. This, oh. has, this has evolved. Let, let me finish that verse, all right? Because he's saying of, of Eli, because his sons brought a curse on themselves and he did not rebuke them. Okay, that's really important now, okay? Mm -hmm. Eli was the high priest. His sons were totally corrupt. But when they were doing evil, 
Eli did not rebuke them. This is what God says and why he has a problem with it. So in the time of Eli, the high priest, and Samuel was the prophet back then, right? So we're back in like the first um, book of Samuel. When Israel went out to meet the Philistines in battle, they wound up taking the Ark of the Covenant. Now they first went out and they were defeated. So they took the Ark of the Covenant out into battle with the Philistines. Mm -hmm. And it was captured. It was captured by the enemy, right? Israel was defeated. The Ark of the Covenant was captured by the Philistines. Eli's sons were killed during those battles. Mm -hmm. And Eli, when he heard that the Ark of the Covenant had been, I mean, do you realize the significance of the Ark of the Covenant? When Eli heard that it had been lost, he literally, he fell over backwards and died. Okay? Interestingly, at that time, when this took place, mm-hmm. Eli's daughter-in-law, who, who was married to one of his sons, mm-hmm. was pregnant. And when the news came back that her, her husband, her brother-in-law, mm-hmm. and now her father-in-law, Eli, had died, let me, let me, when she heard the news that the Ark of, the, of God was taken and that her father-in-law and her husband had died, she kneeled down and gave birth. Mm-hmm. I mean, now she was pregnant, but it was like this shock. Just caused the baby to be born right then, right? right? And she called the boy Ichabod, the glory of the Lord. saying, The glory has departed from Israel because the Ark of the Covenant, the Ark of God was taken, and because of her father in law and her husband. First Samuel 4 21. Mm-hmm. That's what Ichabod means. Mm-hmm. No glory. The glory had departed, all right? Now, think about this, okay, because we're talking about Israel, okay, that's where that that took place in the divided kingdoms, right? That was in Israel. The people of God, us, for example, are supposed to be a witness to the glory, the grandeur, and the goodness of the Lord. That's our responsibility. We're supposed to proclaim his excellencies. And Jesus said, let your light shine before men in such a way that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Matthew 5, 16. Part of the Sermon on the Mount. Mm-hmm. Our lives are supposed to be seen by men that God might be glorified through his work in us. Okay? Yet, the Apostle Paul had to speak to the church at Rome, mm-hmm. saying, But if you bear the name Jew and rely upon the law and boast in God, and know his will and approve of the things that are essential being instructed out of the law, and are confident that you yourself are a guide to the blind, a light to those who are in darkness, a corrector of the foolish, a teacher of the immature, having in the law the embodiment of knowledge and of the truth, Mm -hmm. right? You, therefore, who teach another, do you not teach yourself? Mm -hmm. You who preach that one should not steal. Do you steal? You who say that one should not commit adultery. Do you commit adultery? You who abhor idols. Do you rob temples? You who boast in the law. Through your breaking the law. Do you dishonor God? For the name of God. Has been blasphemed among the Gentiles. Because of you. Just as it is written. Romans chapter 2. Verses 17 to 24. Our responsibility as ambassadors for Christ, to bring the knowledge of the presence of Christ, to show forth the glory of God in this dark world. We are the light of the world, the salt of the earth. That's our job. And yet, when we sin, when we are when we are acting in disobedience to the word that we proclaim, that we love, we're giving opportunity to the enemies of God to blaspheme. Paul said, let a man examine himself. We need to do that. We need to examine our lives and look and see, are we being faithful to the calling of God in our lives? Now, you know what? We all stumble and fall in different ways. Mm -hmm. But there should be a pattern to your life. And that pattern in your life should be that people see Jesus Christ because of you. People see Jesus Christ in you. People see Jesus Christ through you and glorify God the Father. 
All right, let's zip right along to verse 10. Now, remember, this is talking about the people of God. And Amos, the Lord spoke to Amos and said, but they do not know how to do what is right, declares the Lord. Those who, these who hoard up violence and devastation in their citadels. He's talking about the people of God. And he says, they don't know how to do what's right. Mm. Now, the world, <clears throat> and all too often the church, has evolved. <laughs> Mm-hmm. More, like de- more like devolved. Mm-hmm. So I use that judiciously. Give me a little grace here. The church has evolved to a state where people don't even know the difference between right and wrong. They don't know the difference between right and wrong. Good and evil. Or perhaps worse yet, what God spoke to the prophet Isaiah, Isaiah 5.20, and he said, Woe to those who call evil good and good evil who substitute darkness for light and light for darkness, who substitute bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Okay? I want to tell you something. If this sounds judgmental, maybe it is. Maybe it's supposed to be. Maybe it is the judgment of God that here in the United States and in many places that we have traveled throughout the Western world, sin is celebrated. Sin is celebrated and righteousness is mocked. Yes. While the word of God is called hate speech. If that's not calling good evil and evil good, I don't know what is. You see, we're all born, all human beings are born with a stain of sin. It's our it's in our DNA. It comes from our way back father. I see all these commercials, you know, check out you get send in your DNA and find out your I know my origins. <laughs> My Lord, I come from Adam, who, as a matter of fact, was a sinner. And that stain of sin was carried on generation after generation, passed on generation after generation. Until you die. Until I die. A lot of people are afraid of death. Listen, I did it. It wasn't so bad. That's right. Because when you are born again of a father in heaven who has no sin to pass on, who only has righteousness to pass on, you have did I die to yourself? You're a new creation. The old things have passed away. That's what it takes. And we should be rejoicing in that. Hallelujah. See, but I want to tell you something about the natural man. And this, this should be obvious. I promise you it should be obvious to every father. It should be obvious to every mother. You don't have to teach a child how to be bad. You don't have to tra- teach a child to do wrong. You don't need to teach a child to lie. You don't need to teach a child to be selfish. It's in the DNA. It's in the DNA. It comes naturally. It does. Exactly. It comes naturally. That's why it's in conflict with the spiritually. All right? That's right. But the Word of God says, train up a child in the way he should go. Even when he is old, he will not depart from it. Proverbs 22, 6. So children need to be trained in what is good. They need to be they need to be trained what's right. Mm-hmm. They need to be trained in the way they should go. Mm-hmm. It doesn't happen by accident. And shame on parents who think, well, I'll send them off to the world to be trained. The world doesn't have it. You know that uh, we were talking about this the other day, and the word of God, this is pertaining to everything. Peter says pertains to everything. Life and godliness, That's everything right. pertains to godliness. Godliness. So people, when they think about training up their child, they're thinking only the spiritual. But it's everything in life that you should be training them up in. It's in here how to do that. It, it is. And, it's, and God has put it within his body here on earth. Right. I, I'm, I'm going to distract myself a little something here. Somebody, uh, somebody had sent me a video, sent us a, a video. I think I sent it on to you, by the way. Of a fellow, uh, a, a black fellow, a Christian. I don't know him. I don't know what the set, setting was or anything. But when I turn on the video, he was talking about. He's a musician and a singer, and he was talking about uh, how black Negro, the Negro spirituals, started here in the United States from the slave trade and everything. And it was just utterly, utterly amazing because he said, and there's a term for this. Uh, uh, Pente chords, or it came from watching somebody play on the piano only using the black keys. Huh. Now, this is not prejudice, right? Yeah. And 
to prove his point, he's standing there and he starts tinkling the black keys and the, the hymns are immediately recognizable. Wow. And one of the ones that was the most striking was Amazing Grace. And of course, if you know the story, Amazing Grace came from the heart of John Newton, who had been a slave trader, captain of a slave ship. So this fellow is going on and he starts talking about the, the, the sound of these tunes that come up. And he said, Newton must have heard these Negro songs, yeah. songs of sorrow, yeah. songs of pain coming up from the holds of those ships that he captained. Mm. captained. And, he start, and he started to sing Amazing Grace with that beat, with that tempo, with that, with that sorrow in, 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 in it. I tell you, it just grabbed my heart. It was mm. absolutely amazing. Don't let your children learn music from the world no, 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 no. because they will be missing what music was intended to be by God. Don't let your children learn what love is from the movies and songs that are coming out of the world, or they'll have believed a lie. You need to bring up your children in the ways they should go. And you know the way they should go? They should be following the way. Yes, Jesus. Jesus said, I am the way. Teach and train your children to follow Jesus. Okay. Otherwise, they're doing earthly, natural, and, and demonic. demonic things. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. So, I was there, train of child away you go. Now, remember, remember what I just said about Eli, right? Yes. And his sons just a moment ago. Mm -hmm. The Lord dealt with Eli and the nation of Israel because Eli did not rebuke his sons for their sinful and evil behavior. If sin fell upon him. Well, if, if it, it affected nation. the entire nation, right? Mm -hmm. The reality is, and you got to get the reality, if you believe the Word of God. Because if you don't believe the Word of God, you're not going to believe this anyhow. <laughs> the unsaved, those people have not accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Mm -hmm. And it's just a matter of whosoever will. Just Okay, nothing very religious about it. Mm -hmm. Just say, yes, Lord. Okay. Mm -hmm. Those people out there in the world, they are, and I am being as gracious as I know how to be. Those people out there unsaved are insane, blind, and stupid. Because that's what you are if you don't obey God. Right. Deuteronomy 28, 28 says, The Lord will smite you with madness and with blindness and with bewilderment of heart if you don't obey his voice. Wow. And then Jeremiah the prophet, Jeremiah 4, 22 said, For my people are foolish. They know me not. They are stupid children having no understanding. They are shrewd to do evil, but to do good they do not know. Isn't that what Amos is saying here? Yes. So that's why even after we get saved, and even after you've been given the mind of Christ, as Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians 2.16, you are still, we are still instructed to not be conformed to the world, but to be transformed by the renewing of our minds, so that we may prove what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. Romans 12.2. I'm telling you something. Without the mind of Christ, you will not know what is what is good and what is bad. And if you don't know what they are, you'll get them upside down. That's the truth. So you're, you're also told that the solid food of the word, and I pray that this is solid food. I hope it nourishes, nourishes us all. The solid food of the word is for the mature, who because of practice have their senses trained to discern between good and evil. That's Hebrews 5.14. Okay? It comes. It, it's a growing knowledge. You know, we all have to mature. Yes. Okay? Because of practice. Okay? These words that were spoken thousands of years ago should be a wake-up call, the sounding of an alarm to the United States of America, which spends billions and billions of dollars educating and training children but refuses to teach them the difference between right and wrong. I'm telling you the truth. Your That's children insane. are coming out of that government school system, having it upside down and backwards, mm -hmm. okay? They do, however, your children absolutely, check it out now, are getting an excellent education in violence. Yes. I mean, when we're filming this today, 
You know, I just uh, saw in the news this morning that a, a gunman went to where congressional leaders were having a softball game, just playing and enjoying themselves, and started shooting people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In Washington. Yeah. In DC, yeah. And last night, yeah. there was a, a apartment fire or a building oh. fire over in Britain. Yeah, in London. That, that's an area we know very well. I mean, we spent... We've lived in London. It's a and a twenty-four yeah. story building is a big building. Yeah, it was. A, it was indeed a towering inferno. Yes. It was. So I, I just want to read a couple of things now, and these are notes that I made years ago. So I don't know how up to date they are now, but if they're not up to date, it's because it's worse. <laughs> Between two thousand BC and forty-four AD, which brings us into the age of the the, the spirit-filled church, the ancient Egyptians entertained themselves with plays reenacting the murder of their god Osiris, Osiris, okay? And the spectacle, history tells us, led to a number of copycat killings. The ancient Romans were given to lethal spectator sports as well. And in 380 AD, St. Augustine lamented that his society was addicted to gladiator games and was drunk with the fascination of bloodshed. Does that sound like today? <laughs> well, you know, the funny thing is, and it's hardly funny, that if it was true then and that long ago, it is even worse yeah, today. Exactly. It is worse today. There, there are kids roaming our street that think it's sport to hit people on the side of the head. Absolutely. They don't know them. It's just, hey, go do that to that guy. It, and boom, it's hospitalized. It's gratuitous violence. Yes. And that's what they have learned. That's what they have been trained. They haven't been trained in the way. They have been trained in the opposite of the way. And if God is a God of love, they've been trained in hate. If God is a God of, of peace, they have been trained in, in violence. That's the, that's the opposite, I'm telling you. It fills their heart. It is. And this is just a, a statistic from the American Academy of Pe- uh, Pediatrics. American children between 2 and 18 years of age spend an average of 6 hours and 32 minutes each day using media, that's mm-hmm. commercial or self-recorded, videos, movies, and that's more time than they spend on any other activity, okay? You know how much violence there is on television, in the movies? Well, if you don't, turn it on. I can remember years ago, back in the, in the uh, late 80s, middle and late 80s, when I, I had started and was pastoring a church in Sanford, Florida, mm-hmm. and I was talking to parents about the music that their children were listening to, yeah, yeah. and they were oblivious because they never no they never listened to it. They didn't want to hear that. What to them was noise. Yeah. I said, "Well, you have to listen to it. Listen to the words. You have to listen. Yeah. You need to hear the words that your children are feeding on." Mm-hmm. And what I did is, I literally I went to a music store mm-hmm. and I the bought lyrics, lyrics yeah. to some of these songs. The parents were absolutely shocked. Yeah. I mean, the, the children are listening to filth. Well, you know, your, your job, your, your responsibility is to guard your children, okay? Mm-hmm. It's been estimated that by the age of 18, and this is in by one time now, the average young person will have viewed 200,000 acts of violence on television alone. Oh, goodness. Okay. That's what, now this is, I don't know what, that's, what is God's, I, listen, when I was not saved, I actually did a little boxing, I was into martial arts, um, sport, well, some of it's sport, because it's just exercise, what they do now with like mixed martial arts, that's not sport, that's not sport, it's just, and it has it has exploded into this massive, massive entertainment. Yeah. I mean, it is. Yeah, it puts you how in far, mind of the gladiators. How far away yeah. is it from the gladiators in Rome? Yeah. I mean, how far away is it? Yeah. Okay. Well, I I don't want you to hear what the world says about violence. I don't want you to hear what I what think about violence. Works? I want to tell you what God says about violence. Right. Then God said to Noah. Mm-hmm. The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence because of them. And behold, I am about to destroy them with the earth. Genesis 6.13. 
Why did God bring a flood? Because of the violence. In Psalm 11, verse 5, it says, The Lord tests the righteous and the wicked, and the one who loves violence, his soul hates. God hates the soul of a man who loves violence. Proverbs 3, 31 and 2 says, Do not envy a man of violence, and do not choose any of his ways. For the devious are an abomination to the Lord, but he is intimate with the upright. Ezekiel 28, 16. By the abundance of your trade, talking about the devil, were internally filled with violence and you sinned. Therefore I have cast you as profane from the mountain of God, and I have destroyed you, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire, because of violence in his heart. What led to it? The pride in his heart. Okay. Thus says the Lord, Enough, you princes of Israel, put away violence and destruction, and practice justice and righteousness. Stop your expropriations from my people, declares the Lord God. Ezekiel 45, 9. Anybody going to ask me what an expropriation is? Okay, what's the next? Well, in the United States of America today, what we call it is eminent domain. Ah, okay. Expropriation is the government or authority taking away your property, saying we need it. Ah. Now, I mean, sometimes you can look and say, okay, there's justifiable reasons. But in Israel, there weren't justifiable reasons. The reason was they wanted what you had. And that's like Ahab and Jezebel. Mm -hmm. when, Ahab wanted, when Ahab wanted a plot of land that belonged to somebody else. It was expropriated, you know? And and King David did just the opposite. He yeah. bought and yeah. paid for the land. All right. Well, I, I'm, I have, once again, kind of just cut myself short on time. I'm just going to read uh, the 14th verses, which is, well, we'll pick it up again. Okay. From the day that I punish Israel's transgression, I will also punish the altars of Bethel. The horns of the altar will be cut off and they will fall to the ground. Mm. Now that's really important, mm. but I don't want to get it started now because it really we need to devote some time to that, okay? Because that is about the people of God worshiping wrong. You know, Jesus said that there's coming a time, and there's coming a place, you know where the place is? Where the, the, the Father will seek those who worship him in spirit and in truth. Yeah. Bethel is the example of worship, not in spirit, nor in truth. And a lot of this that he's talking about Amos, and I said, I've been saying this since we started. This word was for Israel way back then. This word is for us today. And we need to test what's going on against the word of God. So, Father, speak to us. Lord, don't let this study end when the camera goes off. Lord, help us to meditate on your word. Help us to have conversations with you about what's been said, Lord God. Help us to test what's been said against your whole word, Lord God, because our desire is to serve you. Our desire is to be that salt of the earth, that light of the world. And, Lord, our desire is that you would be glorified through our lives. And this, Father, is our prayer in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Oh, well, yeah. until next time, don't forget to be back. Same back station. <laughs> same time, same station. <laughs> God bless you and goodbye. Be used for His glory. So I cherish that old rugged cross till my truth.